Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Monday, Monday, what shall we say? <laughs> you are going to hear noise on the background because Akira, yellow dog, is chasing a fly and she won't give up on it. Neighbors got kids playing in the yard and the neighbor on the other side is busy digging or building something. Dragon Man has PJ Day at school today and watching him all tucked into his pajamas and gown this morning going to school, I wished I could stay in my pajamas. <laughs> anyway, I think looking at a few recommended videos this morning that I'm not the only one. I think people are more than usual tired and fed up this year and we still have five months to go. Anyway, it was good to see Catherine on that short video with William wishing the British athletes well. She looks good, but I noticed, if you look very carefully, that she had gone grey. It really, really touched my heart, and I wish I could just give her a hug and tell her that she still looks awesome, and is indeed awesome. Such a fantastic role model and fighter. As for William's dad on holiday beard, <laughs> it looks like he's having a good time while on holiday. But I fear that his brother will now likely have some more pubes transplanted or grow his beard knee length or something strange. I can't see has been taking a bro beard lying down. <laughs> As for Carparkle, shall we count the days or the hours until she appears in the next car park? Anyway, guys, being Monday and with the real royals on holiday, it is a bit thin on the news front. Royal news, that is. Of course, other news, in particular the ongoing protests and riots in England, is dominating even on social media channels, usually talking about other things, be it true crime or the royals or celebrities. The thing is that it is not just about the actual protests and clashes, is it? It is also about how leaders are dealing with it, the different political commentators and politicians' reactions, etc., etc. I listened to a number of YouTube channels, podcasts, and read the Mail and Express, or then scanned it, and unfortunately none of it looks positive on this particular Monday morning. I also feel odd, a little odd, commenting on other countries' leadership, and when I do, I always have to be ready to don some kind of emotional armor, because somewhere someone is going to be nasty. Among the hundreds who are kind or intelligent enough to have a healthy debate, there's always one or two who make it their mission to say something derogatory. And for the last two videos, of course, there were a few. I expected it, though, because of the topic. Been there, done that. <laughs> but this time I pulled a Keir Starmer on the nasties and deleted and blocked them. If you can't differ but still be respectful, then bye, Felicia, bye, Karen. Have a nice life. <laughs> anyway. I said this many times before. I have every reason and right to have my opinion on anything in the United Kingdom or the United States because, number one, I am, in effect, a reporter. And number two, I have family and friends in both countries, particularly in England. I have Sylvia, Paul, Kathy, Gus, and a few others. And yes, I may not have seen them since 2014 when I left, but we are still friends, and I still care. My cousin and his wife also 
still live in England, and my eldest daughter and grandchild are Canadian citizens, which means that King Charles is also their head of state. Then thirdly, I have made numerous videos in the past to explain how independent our economies are. So if the dollar or the pound weakens or strengthens, it affects us here at the bottom end of Africa as well. And why would that be? Well, because for one, we pay for our crude oil in dollar. Or at least we still are. It may change in the future. Anyway, so with that out of the way, let's talk about where we are today and why I think we are where we are. First and foremost, yes, I understand the issues with regards to illegal immigration. Like I explained in a previous video, we went through the same thing. The only difference is that when we had the protests and riots, we were called xenophobic. And now that Britain is going through the exact same thing, people are being called the far right. <laughs> what absolute rubbish. What we wanted, just like Britain, was housing, services like in utilities, medical services, jobs and education for our own people before it was handed out to others. We were not xenophobic. As a matter of fact, people from all different places were welcomed. If they came here legally, could pay for their own accommodation and maybe start a small business and employ a few of us. But someone unvetted, no medical records, no money, who walked through a river and then just tried to blend in or come with some sob story to get asylum, is an entirely different matter. Yet, we still do not hate them. It is just that the country, my country, your country, can only support a certain number of these asylum seekers. When they come in in their droves, there just is no time to provide the necessary facilities and services to keep everyone housed, cleaned, fed and healthy. And that is the truth. I mean, easy statistic. The United States Border Patrol had nearly 250,000 encounters with migrants in December 2023. Just counting those who crossed the channel in small boats to reach the United Kingdom in 2023 added up to 29,437. Now that is 29,437 souls who need medical evaluation, accommodation, clothing, food, and whatever else. But my lovely, kind-hearted people, those are only the ones coming across in the dinghies. Another 174,000 people moved to England from the Ukraine under the Ukraine Family Scheme and Ukraine Sponsorship Scheme. In most cases, those also had to be housed and fed and often needed clothing, medication and everything else. I mean, just go ask Sarah York, who had to scramble to get together boxes of sanitary pads because people will donate tinned food, coffee, soap, shampoo, but they don't always drop a box of sanitary pads in the collection box. This, however, proves how needy some of these migrants are and how much they really need. And I don't care whether you are left or right or green or pink, but no country can sustain that kind of influx. It sadly just is what it is. When those people then also 
refuse to assimilate or fit in and do in Rome what the Romans do, then I'm afraid, Houston, we have a problem. It is a problem. It is a problem like we had in South Africa. And it is a problem you are now having in America and England. But where do these problems start? Why does it end in chaos and out of hand? It was barely an issue 20 years ago. Why is it one now? Two words, obviously, in my opinion. Integrity and discipline. The rot, unfortunately, starts at the top. Talk about two-tier policing? What a joke. It's not two-tier policing. It's about three or four tiers. Because remember, there's not just distinction being made between skin color or religion, but also your status and money. Let me give you an example or two. If you allow Rashid to smoke weed on the street because he is Rashid, the untouchable, then you have to allow Joe and Ginger Pete to do so as well. And soon, You can't catch a bus without getting high, although you never touch the stuff yourself. Another example. Remember how Megan suffered from memory loss in a British court when she could not remember feeding SCOBY information via Jason Knopf? Well, only once did I get in trouble for something I said, and a solicitor's firm wrote me a letter wanting me to disclose my source. Well, guess what? All of a sudden, I suffered from memory loss too. I could not remember jack shit. I told them they could subpoena my electronics. (laughs) I mean, calling their bluff. I couldn't see them going through all the trouble all the way from the United Kingdom all the way to South Africa to do just that and then likely get nothing because I would smash my laptop long before they got here. Anyway, well, I also gently and professionally reminded them about Meghan Markle's memory loss and guess what? I never heard from them again. So you see, that is how a president is set. And that is how society gradually disintegrates. It was our very king who, when he was still a prince, accepted money from Bin Mafus in exchange for honours and citizenship, remember? Oh, I mean, talk to the elite and they will tell you, Oh, one hand washes the other. (laughs) The bored and rich are famous for saying, so what? But no, it wasn't really so what. Because now people are paying the ferryman with a fist full of money or a baggie of hashish. British leadership, including its head of state, were warned about the migrant issue. And if you go back in your memory, you will remember that there was indeed a deal struck with Rwanda to have a number of migrants deported to Rwanda. But what happened? The then Prince Charles was one of the first to call the deportation plan appalling. He went on to criticize his own government, saying he was disappointed at the government policy not impressed with the government direction of travel, and their whole approach was appalling. Nice, very nice, but never has he offered for a number of, say, Syrian refugees or Nigerian refugees to go live and work at Sandringham or Balmoral or any of his and Camilla's other properties. How many times have I and others said that there is no such thing as the King and Parliament do not have time for Harry and Meghan? There are more important things to deal with. Uh, Not so. 
Number one, you do not negotiate with terrorists. Number two, if you can't discipline your own children, how do you keep a grip on an entire country? Harry and Meghan made the king, the monarchy as an institution, and parliament look weak. And they still are. Number three, Harry and Meghan have lied and slandered the royal family, the institution of the monarchy, the country, its press, and its people, with absolutely no repercussions. So now the new government wants to throw people in jail for expressing their opinion and frustrations in public or online. But when Harry and Meghan called the British press and people racist and more, or shall I say, and worse, there was no reaction. Again, double standards. The King of Parliament should have shut the hockles down a long time ago, and now it's almost too late. The president of the illegal actions had already been set. So yes, of course, I mean, the immigration and Harry and Meghan issue are totally separate entities and in every way or in a way unrelated, but the principles are the same. If the law and discipline prevailed from the start, the problem would not have escalated to where it is now. And now the British Prime Minister, just like Meghan and Harry, want to take it even further. And he wants us all to be quiet. Quiet when buses, ambulances and police vehicles bought with tax money of the ordinary hard-working citizen are being burned in the streets. Quiet when three little girls on a holiday program are slaughtered. Why were they slaughtered? Was the guy just nuts or did he have a religious or political motive? Oh no, the police do not deem the public important enough to know that kind of information. Yet, they will bring those batons out if you draw your own conclusion. That is certainly not allowed. Not allowed. You cannot draw your own conclusion. But they won't give you the information either. I'm told that Sir Starmer wants to take it so far as to issue warrants against any of us, no matter where we live, warrants which will be executed the moment you put your foot in the country. (laughs) Well, of course, there goes your tourism because those who actually visit or visit on a regular basis are the ones who love the country. And because we love the country, we criticize because we want to see the best for the country. What the current prime minister thinks he's doing is absolutely beyond me. I have certainly never seen anything like it. Obviously, he thinks that he is far superior to the ordinary man. Obviously, he feels morally superior, like his boss, the head of state, so superior that he can tell us how to live and what to think or say. So, my dears, I think it's time to clean house and start at the top. No more Meghan and Harry, their titles can be put in abeyance for a later generation. Stop the boats for now. Take care of your own homeless veterans and homeless people first. And once that is done, sure, it may then be time to pay it forward and help others. Remember, charity begins at home. And leaders, be they kings, prime ministers or presidents, should not be idiots, but lead by example. Okay, folks, once again, I think that's it for today. I think for tomorrow, we need to chill a bit (laughs) and go back on the 
Harry and Meghan train. Jump back on and see what we can find and see what we can hear. Um, yeah, so that will be me tomorrow. So until then, please take good care of yourselves. Bye.